The Startup Life is brought to you by Target. No matter if it's household items to make your home more aesthetically pleasing or a 65 inch TV to complete that man cave, Target is the go-to place for high quality products at an affordable price. Start your Target journey with a link in our show notes. Target, expect more, pay less. This week on The Startup Life. We have interstates crisscrossing our state. Many of our cities have at least two, Mm -hmm. some three or more that coming in and out of our state. So we have amazing accessibility to the rest of the country, which helps with logistics. All right, Startup Nation, so let's take flight with Margaret Dolan, president and CEO of Launch Tennessee. The Startup Life begins now. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. <laughs> Startup Nation, do you enjoy the startup life? Now you can let the world know with gear from the show. Choose from the label yourself, make your own look, and making money t-shirts to tell your story of your path of entrepreneurship. Click the link in the show notes to purchase. All right, Startup Nation, so I hope you're ready to receive some value today. We have a superstar in the building today. We have Margaret Dolan, the president and CEO of Launch Tennessee. How's it going, ma'am? I'm having a spectacular how about you? I can't complain. I can't complain. Are you ready to pour some knowledge in the Startup Nation today? I'm going to do my best. All righty. As always, Startup Nation, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life Podcast, and we are powered by the Binge Podcast Network. So, Miss Dolan, if you would, please, ma'am, share with us your origin story on your path and how you got to this point now. Yeah, so first you have to call me Margaret. Okay, fair Let's enough. Let's dispense with the Miss Dolan Okay, stuff. all right. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> you know, you guys should know he put me in a chair that adjusts involuntarily. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I've had lots of great opportunities uh, over a long career. I'm a certified public accountant, Absolutely. so um, but I'm very much kind of not that, right? Um, but but I was with you know big big eight at the time, now big mm-hmm. four public accounting. I've mm-hmm. been in corporate tax. Um, then I also had the privilege of running a foundation and some corporate philanthropy for a privately held company headquartered sure. in Nashville. Mm-hmm incredible experience. Awesome. Um, that family believed not only in giving back uh, financially, but also in terms of civic leadership. And For so sure. I got, I found myself in amazing spots getting to share in problem solving and trying to find out, find solutions with gotcha. a great group of people and would not have probably had that opportunity otherwise. Absolutely. Dipped my toe in the healthcare field okay. for about 15 months with big nonprofit healthcare with St. Thomas Health, okay. which is a healthcare system in Nashville. It's a subsidiary of Ascension Health. Okay. And then dipped my toe in the startup <laughs> world. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so our little company, the founders hired me to come in and um, it was the very first exchange traded fund based on stocks that were in a city okay and so then we continued to um, try and grow that fund which was really a pilot based on Nashville and the publicly traded headquartered companies that are there right and then we we looked to um, form an expansion strategy and we created indices around 20 nine additional U.S. cities. Got you. Which was incredibly fun. For sure. And just amazing to learn about where all these companies are located. Right. Um, and then we got bought out and the job at Launch Tennessee became available and I thought, you know, maybe there's something I could do with this body of experience that might be helpful to entrepreneurs and startups in Tennessee. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing all of that. Now, I, I know, you know, we talked a little bit about your background. I know you went to uh, you, you said you was born in Memphis, you know, so love to hear that. 
uh, Memphis, uh, you know, born and stuff like that. But I also know you went to the University of Tennessee. You went to Vanderbilt and, and studied business and things of that nature. So is business something that's always just been something that you've been a part of, like your family and things of that nature? Kind of share that story a little bit. Sure. So um, I was born in Memphis. Right. And um, my mother is a, was a teacher. She's retired now. Got it. Okay. And her last assignment was actually here in Memphis at Hamilton High School. Awesome. But in between, um, she taught many different places. My father was with Buckeye Cellulose. Okay. And uh, so at the time it was owned by Procter and Gamble. Mm -hmm. And so we were moved from Memphis when I was just 12 oh, to okay. Northwestern Canada. Got so oh, wow. Okay. Kind of grew up there. Right. Um, spent my first year of college at the University of Vermont where all I did was ski. <laughs> so that was interesting. That was probably my first entrepreneurial enterprise because I learned that you can sell meal tickets mm, for money. There's a secondary market. Right. And, and then aggregate that money and buy a season's pass to interesting to a ski hill. Absolutely, that's that's uh, awesome. Then got educated at the University of Tennessee, took mm -hmm. a job in Nashville, uh, went to Vanderbilt, got my MBA. Mm -hmm. um, but really, um, you ask whether I was had always been committed to business. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. but I've also always been committed to civic service and, and community. Um, from a from a young age, even in high school, and um, I see developing business and empowering people to be able to earn their way at, is 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 the ticket. I hear that. That's the thing that I, that that. I think really is going to sure. transform communities is giving people the tools that they need, and so it's public education. And this whole thing about startups mm -hmm. really um, checks a lot of those boxes because if we can help people start their own businesses and grow them so that they're a sustainable source of income for families right. and individuals, that's powerful. That's the whole thing. That fixes a lot of problems. That Absolutely. We have. I, I actually agree with you. You're, you're giving people a sense of power to control their own destiny and things of that nature. So I definitely appreciate that. And it's one of the reasons why we do this show. So I appreciate you sharing all of that. And when it comes to that civic mindedness, I'm actually going to ask you a question a little bit about that a little bit later. Uh, but I want to ask you about this because you're here in Memphis and you're here to uh, judge uh, the, some pitch competitions here right. for startup of the year competition. So kind of share with us, you know, you know what that experience is like and also when you're judging a pitch competition what are you looking for yeah so um it was pitch competitions are really fun mm -hmm. um they're probably more fun for the people judging them okay the people in the audience <laughs> than the people actually making the pitches just okay. because um just this this competition for example each candidate company had three minutes to mm. pitch their company gotcha which is very short. Right. You've got to be tight on your message. You've got to know exactly what to say. Absolutely. And then we had two minutes to provide questions to them, which they had to then figure out how they could answer as many questions as possible in right. only two minutes. And right. then we got an opportunity to score them. And we were scoring them on the team that they had put together. Okay. On um, their market, their go-to-market strategy. So did their strategy look like they could actually get their product or service to the market? Right. And is it something that's commercially viable? So um, one of the biggest reasons why startups fail is whatever mm. their product or service is, is not something that the market needs or wants, or it's something that the market might need or want, but they're not willing to pay for it. I hear that. And so, you know, really figuring out, is my solution something that the market needs? And then how do I get to that market is really key. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing that. That's definitely something we stress here on the show is finding that market need and definitely filling it. So I appreciate you sharing that. So Startup Nation, you know, when you go to uh, Launch Tennessee's website, we have the link there in the show notes for easy access. You'll see that they have a podcast as well called Disrupt the Continuum. And so, uh, like I said, you can see that on their website and on any podcast platforms you listen to your podcast. So there was a recent ep episode there, Margaret, that I want to ask you about because it's about Sarah Bellows, who's the founder and CEO of Stony Creek Colors. Now, mm -hmm. Startup Nation, what she does is uh, uh, create like organic dyes for like denim and things of that nature. And her, her purpose is to really focus on the or organic nature and, and go away from toxic chemicals like cyanide, from high and benzene and things of that nature. However, what she highlights is this move in entrepreneurship that it's not just about the bottom line, but there is a certain conscious element, uh, civil service, civic service or you know uh, nature to it. So 
I wanted to ask you this, Margaret. You know, you know, why do you think we're seeing more and more businesses that have like that conscious mindset to where it's more than about a bottom line? It's about uh, doing something and making the world a better place. So I think there's a lot of data that okay. actually show that you can do well by doing good. I hear that. And I'm not sure how new it is. It okay. might be newly sort of recognized. Fair enough. But if we look historically at the companies that have done really, really well, it's the companies that have bent over backwards for customer service. They've made their customers happy. And so then then collecting more customers doesn't have to be so proactive. It's that word of mouth. It's, right. You know, your reputation is out there. So you look at companies that have been around for a long time, that's what they've been all about. They pay their people well, they give good benefits, you know, they they take care of their workforce, they're not in um, abusive situations gotcha. with their workers, right. you know, this, this kind of thing. And mm-hmm. so I think it's been around a while. I think you're seeing some more overt efforts to really um, use that to do good. Um, and like repurposing farmland that, sure. that previously was used to grow Absolutely. tobacco or yes. other crops that maybe aren't as um, profitable or fit a guideline that somebody's ideals you right. know, are, are about. Mm-hmm. And so if you can repurpose those and give those farmers a, an opportunity to grow something like indigo or right. other things used in right. those dyes. Mm-hmm. And then if you can repurpose a tobacco factory in rural Tennessee mm-hmm. um, in order to produce your product, then you are doing a lot of good while also producing a product that the market wants. I, I appreciate that because, you know, and, and, and I'm glad you highlighted that point. It's probably just one of those things where it's being highlighted more uh, than uh, the the past, but we're definitely are seeing more and more companies uh, out, you know, in the in the media and things of that nature that that highlight this. So. Well, and I think you're seeing um, all of us want to do our part, sure, and and you know, in recycling waste and those sorts of things. Mm-hmm. And so, I think people too, like brilliant engineers, scientists, Absolutely. are figuring out how to use waste from one thing in order to produce something else that's of value. Gotcha. And I love those kinds of innovations that are going on. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. Now, this com- this conversation with Sarah Bolos actually took place at the, this previous uh, Entrepreneurship Festival 3686, mm-hmm. which uh, started Mesh. I wish you, wish you were here. You can see all this amazing swag that Margaret brought with her <laughs> that we're very appreciative uh, for sure. So sh- just kind of share with us, if you would, you know, the purpose of 3686 and, and everything that comes with it. Sure. Mm-hmm. So a big part of our mission is really connecting entrepreneurs, startups, founders with what they need to scale and grow. Mm-hmm. So they need capital, they need access to markets, they need talent. Right. And we also need a, um, a group of people who understand that entrepreneurship is a viable career path. And so how do, we, how do we teach people to be successful entrepreneurs? So 3686 gives us a chance to bring, bring two in one place over 1,200 people, all that want to connect in some way around entrepreneurs, startups, early stage companies. So mm. we had people from 30 uh, states this year, over 1,200 people, Wow! a couple of different countries, Mm -hmm. which was really fun. Okay. I know. Um, (laughs) You know, 160 investors. Nice. And yeah, really nice mix Mm -hmm. of uh, people from from different states. Tennessee was the top state, as you might imagine, but all over. Significant presence from New York and California. So it's a great way for people to connect. One of the things that we did this year that I thought was really impactful and I heard a lot of good buzz around mm-hmm. is we had we used a platform called My Business Matches. Okay. Where I would say it's kind of like a dating app where people who were seeking capital put in their company profile and how much money they were seeking and what it was for and a little bit about their company. And investors who were seeking opportunities to put their capital to work could input their data. And then uh, they would each be presented with a match opportunity. And if they checked a box, then it would set up an appointment at 10 o'clock on Thursday or something. Nice. Yeah. So then they both come and they check in at a table and it says your meeting's at table 29. Oh, nice. So they go sit down and meet (laughs) one another and are able to have a conversation. But you've already established that each of them have some base 
level of um, interest right. in the opportunity to have that meeting. For sure. So super successful. I think we had over 400 meetings hmm. um, by using that technology. And so really just bringing people together. Um, we used six different venues. We had over 100 speakers. So there was something for everybody to Absolutely. walk away from that conference. Absolutely. And and I appreciate you sharing that because I know that when it comes to many startup founders, one of the biggest things uh, that they have issues with, no, not issues with, but have a a barrier, if you would, is to who do I contact if I need funding? Who do I contact if I need mentorship? Who do I, where do I go? So I love how uh, the mission of Lost Tennessee and 3686 kind of just brings it all under one house for this two-day event and, and shares that. So I, I appreciate you sharing all of that for sure. So the, one of the unique um, value propositions sure. of Tennessee mm-hmm. is that we do have this statewide organization in Launch Tennessee, but we are the connective tissue and the glue between a network of partners across the state. I hear that. So there are six entrepreneur centers across the state. We're mm. you know trying to build that out to be even right. more. We're connected in with uh, higher education. Um, so at, at each location, there is a place for an entrepreneur to be able to walk into a front door and then be navigated to whatever it is they need. We run. We partner with. Um, Life Science Tennessee, also in the Tennessee Advanced Energy Business Network, um, excuse me, Advanced Energy Business Council, on some mentor networks um, right. in the life sciences sure. as well as the um, advanced energy. And then we're looking to expand those into agriculture and also automotive because those are two industries that are huge in Tennessee with lots of opportunity for entrepreneurs. Absolutely. And Startup Nation, just kind of want to give you a heads up. Now, you know, we just had the one that just passed this past summer. But for the next uh, 3686 will actually be August 26th and 27th of 2020. So make sure you go to the show notes right now and go ahead and register for uh, the next entrepreneur entrepreneurship festival that they're going to have. And is there in Nashville, correct? It is in okay. Nashville, and it's the Wednesday, Thursday prior to Labor Day weekend. Got it. So okay. it's a really fun time to be in Nashville. There's a uh, music festival that weekend that's okay. downtown. So ah, lots of fun stuff very going intentional. on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we'll make sure and get your listeners a discount code. Thank you. I appreciate that. Look, You know, we love that here at the Startup Nation and here at the Startup Life Podcast. We definitely love discount codes and freebies and things of that nature. So thank you so much. Uh, Margaret, if you would, take me behind the scenes a little bit of 3686. What goes into the planning and the bringing in speakers and, and all of the festivities that goes on behind it? Yeah, well, it is definitely a team effort. For sure. For sure. I mean, <laughs> there's just too much for it not to be a team effort. Um, we have we have a very small team at Launch Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, we're 14 positions. Right. And uh, so that we do have one person who's the lead on building out uh, 3686. Okay. And actually, it's a team of two. Gotcha. It really builds that out. But the, the entire team tries to stay alert as we are out doing our everyday work for great speakers. Mm, and like, you know, I was able to judge, you know, be one of the judges for the startup of the year. And Absolutely. so... You know, I'm alert for the other judges, like maybe some of them might be interesting speakers or, um, you know, panelists or something like that. I'm also looking at startups, like maybe I need to make sure that they're plugged in and that they, you know, are able to come to, to uh, 3686. So gotcha. it's it's awareness. People are paying attention to publications. Um, they're talking like one of the things that that Launch Tennessee does is around federal grants for innovation. And they're called SBIR okay. and STTR. Okay. We provide some grant funding. Like, let's say you were doing some research and you've discovered something interesting and you want to get federal funding to help you continue your research. Sure. We have a small grant that we can give you because most of the time, really great researchers and scientists may not be good grant writers. Mm, that's so, true. So we have a stable of grant writers that we can pay, pair them with. And we can fund that for them so they can apply for the federal grant funding to continue their research. And then we can match those amounts that the feds give, Mm -hmm. and our money can be used to actually 
build out the business around that discovery. Absolutely. So in that vein, we also see lots of really great things going on Absolutely. in the market right. around some of these discoveries. Mm-hmm. So that also helps us build it out. And also because we have this network of entrepreneur centers mm-hmm. across the state, Epicenter is our primary um, partner here in the Memphis area. Absolutely. And we hear from them about what the needs of the market are in terms of curriculum. And so we also try and build out panels that will actually give entrepreneurs and startups what they need to walk away with that's actually going to help them in their business. Got you. Thank you for sharing that. I appreciate that. Now, like you said, you, you, you spoke about you know having many different panel discussions and things of that nature, different speakers and things of that nature. And I imagine one of the biggest draws were two people that I admire – uh, Governor, former Governor Bill Haslam and Senator, former Senator uh, Bob Corker. If I were a person who wasn't able to attend that that particular session, what would have I have learned from those two men? You know, I think I came away with a couple of really interesting nuggets. Okay. Um, on the political side. For sure. And they really tried to steer, steer clear of politics generally gotcha. because we were there to talk about startups and right. business. Of course. But but what you come away from 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 those guys is having the ability to negotiate, having the ability to walk into a room without a, com, a preconceived notion about what the answer is, using these two things on the side of our head that we call ears <laughs> Absolutely. to actually listen to what people have to say and um, finding a meeting of the minds. Um, and I, I think that's what I, it's a, a, a reasonableness. Absolutely. That, that they would advocate. I hear that. I hear and that. so it was really, it was just great to hear that reinforced um, mm-hmm. from them, although we've heard it many times before. And then on the business front, of course, mm-hmm. they're both business people. Absolutely. And so um, it's just always interesting to hear um, from people who have, started, um, you know, building something themselves Absolutely. And, and grown that into a major company or somebody who um, had a family business that is, is part of them. And to be able to watch that scale and grow um, last year's 36, not this past year, right. but in 2018, I attended as a civilian. I wasn't part of, 30, <laughs> I wasn't part of launch Tennessee yet. Got you. And, um, Governor Haslam was there uh, doing a fireside chat with his father, hmm. which was fascinating to hear about their journey um, growing pilot right. and the times when they might have been tempted to take in um, outside capital and they didn't do it and and what impact they had on their business. That's one of the other things that, that we try and help entrepreneurs with. Mm. And actually, one of them that was pitching today, okay. somebody said... With your revenue numbers, why are you seeking capital? Interesting. Because the best way to capitalize your company is if you can just cash flow it. Mm. And that way you don't have to sell a part of it off to somebody else in exchange for their capital investment. Gotcha. And a lot of people may not inherently just understand that if you go out to the market and say, I want you to invest in my company, I'm going to have to give up some portion of it. Right. And at some point, I, that means I may not control my own company anymore. Right. And so I think sort of understanding some of those nuances about the different kinds of capital that's available and what that means for you gotcha. as a business owner. Let me ask you a quick follow up, if I could, to that. So how do you like what are some of those things that I should be asking myself if I'm a startup founder, if I want to give away some of that equity in regards to capital or not? take that around. What are some of those questions I should ask myself? Well, one, I think one of the most important things is is having a, a real evaluation of your business. So okay. you know how earlier we were talking about, is your product or service something that the market wants? Absolutely. And can you produce that product or service for a cost mm-hmm. that you can then sell for more than that cost so you can make a profit on that thing? Right. Whatever it is. Right. So that's the first question is can you do that? Okay. And and can you can you find the right manufacturer or the supply chain? And and then how do you get it to market? How are you going to find out where your customers are and how are you going to build a sales force that can get out there to those customers and actually make that sale complete? For sure. So thinking about all that, building the right kind of projections. I hear that. 
and uh, not just on the revenue side, sure. but on the cost side. Okay. And figuring out what kind of money it's going to take to get you to profitability. Some of, some companies find profitability really early hmm. because whatever it is they make doesn't cost very much. Fair, so fair they true. don't have to put a lot of capital into it. And a lot of it then is their own effort sometimes too. Absolutely. But there's a limit to how many hours we can work in a week. That is true. That is very true. And, and so then <laughs> it's, it's just a balance. When you look at those projections... And you figure out, okay, at what point am I going to have to hire another person? Mm. And how much is that person going to cost? Absolutely. Or can I outsource it and do like contract labor or somebody who's going to work on pure commission, which might be a different, it might hit my bottom line in a different way. So it's just kind of figuring out at what point you need that capital, how much your company's worth, Mm -hmm. and what that means you're going to have to trade. Absolutely. In exchange for getting the money. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing it. I think, you know, uh, uh, here at Owls LLC, one, that's one of the, the, the things that we struggle with and, and ask ourselves, you know, that balance. Like, where where is that pressure point to say, hire somebody, seek outside capital as opposed to, like, you know, just cash flow it, like you were saying. So uh, I appreciate all of that. I'm pretty sure Startup Nation does. And, you know, uh, how well. much do you, do you need more square footage? For do sure. you have to have a bigger place? Absolutely. Or can you, you know, do you have to keep working out of your house? And how many people can you have in your living room right. working on your thing? <laughs> right. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Thank you for sharing that. Last question before we go to break, because you talked about, uh, you know, uh, Senator Corker and Governor Haslam being, you know, great business minds and things of that nature. And it makes me think about state of Tennessee as a whole. It seems like we are definitely open for business. We think about Governor Bill Haslam. For- current Governor Bill Lee uh, comes from the business world. Uh, we were uh, Tennessee was just ranked as the uh, uh, best business climate here in the state of Tennessee. Even here in Memphis, we're seeing an influx of businesses come from other places. What are we doing right here in Tennessee? And how do we capitalize on that? Yeah, so you mentioned our governors. Right. We have had, and Governor Lee is just keeping it up. He's firing on all cylinders. Right. We have had a series of governors from both political parties. Absolutely. Who have a head for business and who know that the prosperity of Tennesseans depends on their ability to do business well in our state. Mm -hmm. We have a favorable tax climate. Right. We have some inherent natural environmental issues that are helpful to us. We have beautiful mountains. We have beautiful lakes. We're located very close to most of the population of the United States. That's true. We have interstates crisscrossing our state. Many of our cities have at least two, Mm -hmm. some three or more. That coming in and out of our state. So we have amazing accessibility to the rest of the country, which helps with logistics, moving your product, getting your supplies in, all of those things. Um, we have a reasonable regulatory environment where we're not overburdening business with having to spend a lot of money on compliance issues. We have a friendly uh, uh, populace. Mm-hmm. That's one of the things that people say. That's true. Very often <laughs> that's about very Tennesseans true. is that you know we're just inherently friendly, mm-hmm. and that's very welcoming as businesses are considering whether they're going to uh, come to Tennessee to do business or whether they're going to start and grow their businesses here. Um, we have access to inland waterway barge transportation when it is massive shipments of things right. that are best on the river system and with access to ports. We go all the way down to New Orleans. So Absolutely. Yeah, so there are, there are great advantages here, um, and it's a great place to live. We also have a, a well-developed workforce um, that is expanding. Absolutely. Especially the tech sector. We're working really hard on that. Mm -hmm. And um, we've put a lot of education reforms in place over the last few decades that I think are beginning to bear fruit. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing that. So we're going to go ahead and take a quick break. How do you like being on the Startup Life? Oh, I just love it. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Oh, no worries. We appreciate you. All right, Startup Nation. So I hope you're getting great value from Margaret's content, but we got to pay a few bills. Once again, my name is Dominic Lawson. This is the Startup Life Podcast, and it is powered by the Binge Podcast Network.
Startup Nation, Kendra and I, along with our daughter Zoe, have this thing called Target Fridays if she's had a good week at school. We stop by the snack bar for popcorn and mermaid ices. Startup Nation, don't judge me until you've tried them. Those ices are really good. Anyways, we then head over to the toy section so my daughter can add to her LOL doll collection. My daughter is a pretty good student, so you can imagine that we have spent a small fortune on LOL dolls. However, I can take solace in the fact that Target makes it affordable to buy those LOL dolls and anything else we need as a family. That's because Target believes you deserve quality at an affordable price. And when you're entrepreneurs like us, that's extremely important. But great deals and quality products are not exclusive to the brick and mortar version of the retail store. Target.com has even more exclusive deals that you can appreciate. And when you spend over $35, shipping is free. And I know we all love free shipping. We love to purchase the amazing kids clothes for Zoe from the exclusive to Target Cat and Jack line when we go online. So the next time you listen to the show and you are reminded that you need something for your home, Start your target journey with the link in our show notes where you can expect more and pay less. All right, Startup Nation, so let's continue. So, Margaret, if you would, please, just tell us about your role as president and CEO of Launch Tennessee and what that responsibility means. Sure. Um, well, I've been in the role almost a year, mm-hmm. So, um, and it's been an amazing year. So, as I mentioned earlier, <clears throat> we have a team of uh, 14. Right. We have two in Knoxville. Everybody else is in Nashville. Okay. But everybody spends a lot of time on the road, Mm -hmm. um, which is super. And uh, the board and our previous CEO, Charlie Brock, who's amazing, had done a great job sort of putting together a five-year plan for our organization. And with our big, hairy, audacious goal of making Tennessee the most startup-friendly state in the nation. I hear that. Yeah, so we're (laughs) we're excited about that. Absolutely. Um, And I mentioned a little bit before sort of our strategic priorities around capital, uh, market access, commercialization, which is that um, emerging technology innovation that I was talking about. Mm Um, talent, and then also just that general business environment. So how can we help maintain that business environment that makes it a place where everybody wants to come and start and grow their businesses? I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. So uh, I want to ask you this, because I know Launch Tennessee has many different trainings and workshops and mentor you know, uh, resources and things of that nature. Just kind of share uh, those programs and the value that people get when they engage in those programs. Sure. Mm-hmm. So as I mentioned, the network of entrepreneur centers across the state is really the front door entry point gotcha. for a startup. So if somebody in Nashville you know, messaged me and said, hey, I'm trying to get started and I'm not really sure where to turn, I would say go to the Nashville Entrepreneur Center. If it's here in Memphis, I'd say go to Epicenter. Right. If it's in Knoxville, I'd say go to the Knoxville Entrepreneur Center and mm-hmm. so on and so forth across the state. For sure. Um, but then there are certain things that can best be done from a statewide view. And that's where Launch Tennessee kind of jumps in. And that's right. on that um, funding and assistance with the SBIRS TTR. Um, we did some sort of traveling road shows to help entrepreneurs and startups understand how to develop relationships with all the federal agencies that make those grants. Understood. Um, how to get connected in that, how to think about how they fit into their research plans, that sort of thing. Um the mentor networks have been extraordinarily successful, oh, and that's why we're so excited about being able to expand those to two new industry verticals. Interesting. Um, and it's a very structured mentorship program, so it's not like, well, you and I are going to meet for coffee once a month, you know, and chat. Gotcha. It's very structured around milestones. You know, are you trying to get to a pitch deck? Are you trying to get to a capital event, and so on and so forth. And so it's very measured. Um, toward those goals. Gotcha. Um, we also have a jobs board. So all your okay. listeners who have startups and need people to come and work so that they can scale and grow, you can post your job for free. If you go to our website and look for the jobs board. You can click on there, add your jobs. There are new jobs that come online every day. And also, if you're interested in working and, you know, seeing what jobs are out there for you with a startup. I hear that. You go in on the other side and you seek jobs using that. We also have a really robust internship program. So uh, college students who are uh, looking to intern with a startup or with one of those partners across the state who are working with a lot of different startups. Right. They apply. 
Um, and we pay for half of the stipend for them to work there Very for the nice. summer, which is, it works out really well. The right. interns have a super experience, but also the startups get really quality talent to come in and help them out for a several month period of time. And several times those have ended up in permanent hires yeah. after the internship Absolutely. concludes. Yeah, exactly. And then um, we also just rolled out um, just recently, like two weeks ago, I want to say, we worked with a development shop that helped us tailor a sales force and customize it. Absolutely. And we were able to roll that out to those partners, those entrepreneur centers across the state, mm-hmm. so that we can build this really robust database of opportunities for startups to be able to learn about one another, for capital to be able to find startups, and right. for all of those centers to be able to keep up with their stakeholders. Gotcha. Thank you for sharing it. And I appreciate you you sharing the, the piece about, you know, the jobs piece, uh, because there are many people who listen to the show and just like, you know, just want to get stuff about the entrepreneurial mindset, but they don't really have, you know, they're, they're not really trying to be a startup founder or anything of that nature, but they do appreciate the startup life, shameless plug, and they also <laughs> appreciate being on the ground floor of a startup, just working as a traditional employee. So I appreciate that. Along those same lines, we just rolled out something um the VEP. Okay. And it's about uh, learning how to be an entrepreneur. I hear that. So if you go to our website and click on that, some online coursework, and um, there are two classes. There's a VEP 101 and 102. Okay. I think if I have the course numbers right. <laughs> Got you. And, you know, the first one is for somebody who's like in the very early stages about thinking about a startup. Like, I've had this great idea for years, and I think I'd like to take a stab at building a business around it. Where do I even start? So that is, um, you know, learning how to be an entrepreneur. And then the 102 is for somebody who's a little further developed in their plans and how do you build out a business plan and maybe some more sophisticated work around that. And those courses are $99. Very affordable. They they move along at your own pace. Gotcha. So nobody's saying, you know, I think you have to complete it in six months maybe. Okay. Um, and you get fifty dollars back. Nice when you finish the class. Okay. So in a, you know it's for forty nine dollars. You've right. got a really nice quality online course sure. about being an entrepreneur. For sure. And then um, at thirty six eighty six next year, August twenty six and twenty seven, absolutely in Nashville. Register in the show notes. <laughs> Um, We're going to be awarding certificates to people who complete that, and they will get a discount on a ticket to 3686 when they complete those courses. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, so we're thrilled about that. And so, you know, that's another thing that anybody across the state can take advantage of. There's some high school programming. Um, that we that's offered to any school system in the state of Tennessee that uh, several schools have taken advantage of with really nice results. I think mm-hmm. there's a they can either opt in to a one semester or a two semester offering, okay. and it qualifies for um, the credit high school credit for sure. And you know, to me, any time we can get a student mm-hmm. excited about thinking about. Being empowered to start their own business, right? I I just love that, and I, I think it's it's a tool that may keep them in school longer if they're in danger of being a dropout, and it may encourage them to go on and acquire higher education using the Tennessee Promise, you know, at our right. community colleges. For sure. where, and many of the community colleges are are uh, unfolding curriculum in entrepreneurship. They are. So think about a. a kid who's either they might be in a rural community they might be an urban community they might perceive that they have limited opportunity but if they can learn at an early age that they can they can be empowered themselves to take control of their own life for sure to to put some of the things that they think about and kids have great ideas um they get through high school they get into community college now they say wow i really can do this then they go on and finish their four-year degree and they go back to wherever their community was that may not have participated fully Mm -hmm. in the economic prosperity that many of us have enjoyed over the last few years. Right. And they can start a new business and and bring prosperity to their community. I hear that. I appreciate you sharing that, and especially about the part about uh, students feeling empowered. That, that's uh, very uh, special to me because uh, here in Memphis, I uh, mentor at Light Memphis. Let's innovate through education. I you know, mentor there every Sunday. And so that's something that's very important to me. So I appreciate you sharing that. 
uh, for sure. Now, one of the things I love about Launch Tennessee is that you have uh, what they call technology transfer offices across the state as well. There's seven of them, uh, one here in Memphis at the University of Memphis FedEx Institute of Technology. Talk about the goal of those offices and, and the value that they bring as well. Yeah, so a lot of the... Um a lot of entrepreneurship and startups that are really successful now are tech enabled. Absolutely. And so, um, having places where people can uh, rub elbows with one another, exchange great ideas, be creative together, and really be able to bring those um, those discoveries to fruition. Mm-hmm. And then those are the kinds of things that would be really well suited to getting some grant funded from grant funding from Department of Defense or Department of Education. I hear that. Uh, there, almost everything is tech enabled. It's, it's true. I mean, so some of the pitches that I heard today, one of them was a commercial cleaning okay. service that's tech enabled. A lawn care wow. company that's tech enabled. Um, one of the startups that is is actually here in Memphis called Med Hall. Okay, is really interesting, and um, we had a chance to talk to her. She's a female founder. Um, African-American founder, right. delightful young woman. Mm-hmm. And she saw a need because her family member had had a stroke. Mm-hmm. And so she needed somebody in the family had to take off work to be able to help the family member get from her home to follow up appointments with physicians. Right. That's a struggle. Absolutely. That's a struggle, and especially for somebody who has mobility issues. So they might be in a wheelchair, they might need a stretcher, and so on. And so she's developed a technology tool that helps facilitate being able to get that patient from their home to their follow-up appointments and back again in a reasonable amount of time. I know here in Memphis you probably have what many cities have where you can, it's as a public service, you know, you kind of set up and make an appointment for elderly people or right. so on to do that kind For of sure. thing. But often they there's a window of time when they come to get you and then you may not be back in your home for eight hours because they're you know they're running on a loop or right. something as opposed to no, you I need you to go pick up the patient, take them to their appointment, take them right back. Right. So, you know, she just saw a need for something and as I've been talking with others about this, apparently across the state when we look at health outcomes, and Tennessee suffers mm-hmm. on several markers of good health. Um, we have high rates of obesity. We have high rates of uh, heart disease. Right. Um, and a lot of it's inactivity. We have high rates of uh, diabetes. So when you look at some of those barriers to good health, apparently transportation is one of them, especially in our rural communities mm. where our rural, some of our municipalities are having to pay extraordinary amounts of overtime to emergency medical technicians because there's no other way to get these patients to their follow-up, so they call an ambulance. Absolutely. And so thinking about some of these things and offering them up to the startup and entrepreneur community, they will solve the problem. Absolutely. Absolutely. They'll figure it out. And a lot of them are tech enabled. And so having um, access to laboratories, to tech transfer, to people who can help with intellectual property, Mm -hmm. building the business around it, that's what we need. I hear that. And thank you for sharing all of that for sure. I want to ask you this because, you know, you, you talk about your amazing team there at Launch Tennessee. There's 14 of you and things of that nature. Talk about the responsibility of, you know, leading that team of 14 that engages with the work that you do and making sure that, you know, the, the people that you have in place are definitely telling the story about Launch Tennessee and things of that nature. Also, Startup Nation, uh, make sure you go to the website and check out all those amazing resources, launchtn.org. We have a link there in the show notes for easy access. But talk about sure, that a little thank bit you. if you would. Mm-hmm. So I see my role as president and CEO as, I, I don't want to overuse the word empowerment, but it's it's to empower and facilitate this team for sure to do what they're capable of. And, and they're highly capable. They're hard workers, they're high intellect, they're bright, they're fun to be around, they've got a lot of energy. And so I just have to give them what they need to do their best work and get out of their way. 
Gotcha. Um, I do enjoy doing things like this and being able to tell our story mm-hmm. um, and, and just being out and being able to bring and make connections for Launch Tennessee for and sure. then be able to connect those with the right people within our organization. And then there's just all kind of the normal stuff about running a business. Making, Absolutely. You know, making sure we have cash, making sure <laughs> yeah. the audit gets done, making sure. sure the tax return is taken care sure. of. and. <laughs> You know that the website looks good. Absolutely. And, and I'm not directly responsible for any of that, but it's right. you know, just things we have to pay attention to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for sharing all of that for sure. I, I want to ask you this, you know, because, you know, as you're a leader there at Launch Tennessee, uh, many leaders learn from other leaders, whether they've met them before or haven't met them before, and things of that nature. Who is somebody that you admire, past or present, living, not living, things of that nature? And what are some of those things that you learned from them that you kind of ascribe in your leadership as Launch Tennessee? Well, it's funny. It's a There's a collection of stuff that I just, um, I don't have a name to give you. Okay. Because um, I'm not a real... I'm I'm not a real voracious reader of like business books and gotcha. stuff like okay. that. I try and I really try and learn from the people I'm with all the time. That. Um I mentioned the family that I worked for, um, is the Ingram family, Ingram mm-hmm. Industries in Nashville. And I learned a tremendous amount from Martha Ingram, Orrin Ingram, John Ingram in terms of their management style, their ability to um, run a very large business mm-hmm. um, really well gotcha. so that people liked being there I that. Um, at the same time that the business was doing well. And that's that, you know, doing well by doing good kind of I equation that, that yes. we talked about Absolutely. earlier. Um, but some of the other, you know, things that I've just picked up along the way that I, I try and remember mm-hmm. is, um, and this I heard from my father, who's deceased now, but... Perfection is the enemy of good. Mm. So if you're always going to perf- for perfect, you're never going to get there and you're going to fail. So sometimes you have to settle for good. Gotcha. It's like find the best, find the best answer. I hear that. It might not be the perfect answer. Gotcha. But we keep on chipping away at it. You know, we'll we'll keep perfect out there as the as the bee hag. I hear that. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> Thank you for sharing um, it. And then um, one of them, and a friend, a good friend, and I laugh about this one, is sometimes you just have to get all the liars in the room. Mm. You know, sometimes where you've got somebody telling you one thing, somebody else telling you another thing, nobody's really lying, right? But we just have to get everybody together to have the conversation at the same time so there's not misunderstanding and, and sort of one offedness. Gotcha. And then um, the last thing that I usually try and think about is, you know, it's always hard to have hard conversations. And deal with problems. Right. And bad news doesn't age well. Hmm. It's like just, you know, confront things as they need to be confronted and deal with them because they're not necessarily just going to get easier as they as they age. Many times they get worse. I hear that. I hear that. Thank you for sharing that. I want to know this. We, we ask everybody this, their entrepreneurial superpower. What's your entrepreneurial superpower and why? Wow, entrepreneurial superpower. Mm-hmm. I'm not quite sure I have one. Okay. <laughs> um, but maybe maybe a nice blend of optimism. The my glass is 75% full. I hear that. With a dose of pragmatism. Got it. Like okay, we can have the optimistic conversation, but now let's inject a little bit of reality and figure out the right answer. Gotcha. Gotcha. I hear that. I hear that. And before I ask the last question, Margaret, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the Startup Life Podcast, powered by the Binge Podcast Network. You gave amazing value uh, from starting a business, what are things to look for uh, when judging a pitch competition and things of that nature, and also just the general uh, uh, mission of Launch Tennessee. Once again, Startup Nation, uh, go to the show notes, launchtn.org. The link is there in the show notes. And also register for the next 3686 Entrepreneurial uh, Festival, uh, August 26th to 27th, 2020. We also have that link in the show notes as well. And also that, that, that coupon code uh, as well. Uh, but now I'm going to turn the microphone over to you because there's an entrepreneur out there in Tennessee and abroad that they're looking for a little motivation today. They feel stuck in their business or they're afraid to start. Give them some words of motivation today, if you would, Margaret. Yeah. You know, so I would go back to that perfection is the enemy of good. OK. I think being an entrepreneur in a startup takes a lot of guts. Mm. It you're 
There are going to be days when you are down in a ditch and it's really hard to see your way out. But maybe all you're going to do today is make one step toward getting out of the ditch. And that's good enough. And so I think it, it also goes back to that phrase, you know, how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes things are going to go slowly and sometimes they're going to pick up and go so fast that you feel like you can hardly keep up. And those are two sort of different ends of the spectrum. But I think you just have to hang in there, have confidence in yourself, um, pivot when needed. Mm-hmm. Use the ears on either side of your head to listen and get as much advice and counsel as you can. Don't be afraid that if um, halfway in your journey you find out that your product is a buggy wheel and it's a an automobile world, that you can pivot that and start making tires. I hear that. So I, I think just being open to the need for change, We this is a very fast-paced environment, and especially when... So much is coming out that is tech enabled. I'd say don't get discouraged. Um, Be alert for problems that you're going to be able to solve. And maybe that's your new business. I hear that. I hear that. So that's going to wrap up this session of the Startup Life. Did you enjoy being on the show? I did. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. I'm thrilled to be able to talk with you, get to know you a little bit. And uh, uh, it's just great being here with your audience. So thank you. No worries. You'll be willing to come back? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, Startup Nation. So here's my final take. Margaret is such a great leader and so needed uh, for the startup culture here in Tennessee and abroad for that matter. She definitely understands and gets the importance of the startup culture and the importance of entrepreneurship because that creates jobs and that creates opportunities, not only for those entrepreneurs, but for millions and millions of people across our state and throughout the Southeast. And when they put on 3686 there in Nashville, they're bringing all those resources, all that knowledge uh, under one house. And that's super important because in this day and age, when it comes to entrepreneurship, things are so scattered out where you like, you got to go here to get this resource. You got to go there to get this resource. And so what Margaret and her team does, well, not just with 3686, but with Launch Tennessee as a whole, is bring all of those resources to you in one common place. And Startup Nation, I definitely want to encourage you to come to 3686 in August 26th and August 27th. Uh, Tickets will go on sale January 2020 at attend3686.com. There's a link there in the show notes for easy access. And we actually have a coupon code there in the show notes for you to get a nice little discount off your tickets. If you want to let us know what you think about our show, have an idea for a show topic, or would like to advertise on our show, Send us a message on the Startup Life Podcast Facebook page. And while you are there, like and follow our page as well. It's a great way for us to engage with you, Startup Nation, and really grow our community. The link is there in the show notes. Subscribe to the show as it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Spotify, or even on your Facebook timeline or any other platform you like to get your podcast. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts and you find our content valuable, please give us a five-star rating as it will help us climb the charts and help more people find our show. You can also listen to the show on the Startup Life Podcast new website. There you will find the all-new startup blog where I write on many topics that are interesting and helpful to you on your path to entrepreneurship. And hey, If you have an idea, be about that life, the startup life.